Who else but Quagmire? He's Quagmire. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things Glenn Quagmire has ever done. I'm sorry, everybody. I just wanted to meet her so bad. I can't do anything right. For this list, we'll be looking at the most terrible crimes and other misdeeds committed by this Family Guy character. To be clear, we all know what Quagmire's thing is. And it's not exactly brand safe, so we'll be looking at the broader spectrum of his misconduct as well. If there's a quagmire crime we forgot, stick it to us in the comments. Number 10. Sleeping with his friends' families Quagmire's libido knows few bounds, even when it comes to his friends' families. Don't worry, Lois. I'd do everything to you. What? I'd do anything for you. He has long pined for Peter's wife, Lois, and even their daughter, Meg. He once tricks Joe into giving him his blessing to sleep with Bonnie, and Cleveland nearly ends their friendship after Quagmire sleeps with his first wife, Loretta. He hasn't been shy about wanting to sleep with Cleveland's second wife, either. Well, what's the that supposed to mean? Like I don't know. Ron hey, Cleveland, can I do your wife? The bro code isn't something Quagmire adheres to consistently. In any other group of friends, he'd probably be kicked to the curb faster than he can say, Quagmire cuckolding his buddies may be a misdemeanor in Rhode Island, but it's still more than we can say for some of his other transgressions. Hey, look at me! I'm Quagmire! I had sex with your wife! Giggity, 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 giggity! <laughs> Those are so his mannerisms. Number 9. Forcing Ida to choose between him and Brian Quagmire's relationship with his parents is naturally unhealthy, but it's especially noticeable with his transgender mother, Ida. Ida and I have, uh, begun dating. You're, you're joking, right? It's true, son. Brian and I are in love. What? When were you going to tell me this? When Ida gets back together with Brian, Quagmire reacts with disdain, given his unfettered hatred for the Griffin family dog. His enmity for Brian leads him to demand that Ida choose between her relationship with Brian and him. You're also a pompous, pretentious, hypocritical blowhard. Who attended Brown? For one semester. You went to Brown? For two months. See, see, that's what I mean. His whole life is a lie. I can't take this anymore. It's either him or me. While Ida does choose her son, Quagmire is still terrible for forcing his mother to forego her own happiness and for breaking up their relationship. But this isn't the first or worst thing Quagmire has done to Brian where Ida's concerned. More on that later. Bye-bye, Brian. You're history. And this time, history's not coming back to life. Night at the museum. Number 8. Faking his own death to get out of marriage. Day uniden, hablen death are with hal uniden, let hansed deun quagmandir. Dena den re dun hebeldeth mithrendir ve on hell hesano. After Quagmire gets married to a maid named Joan, he seemingly changes his entire personality. However, after the old hymn resurfaces, he quickly comes to regret married life. Oh god, I gotta get out of this marriage. Cleveland, how did you get out of yours? You slept with my wife. When he floats the idea of a divorce to Joan, she reacts with threats of violence. Rather than pursue things the legal way, Peter suggests an alternative, faking his own death. So anyway, here's Quagmire walking through the park, minding his own business. Uh, I just happen to be there with my video camera when a ninja shows up! Granted, Joan isn't exactly stable, and Quagmire's first video attempt at fooling her is admittedly hilarious. Faking her death to get away from someone isn't the best way to deal with an admittedly crazed partner. And Joan's exit from the show is pretty grim, too. Sorry, Mr. Quagmire, but I still need a body to take back with me, so... No! You can't take him! Number 7. Shooting Peter in the Head Hey, Peter, you got your safety on, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, because your gun is pointing right at me. Wait, you want me to pull the trigger and prove it to you? No, I just want to make sure your safety's on. Yeah, see Quagmire? Safety's on. Now this is a gun without a safety. During a hunting trip, Peter accidentally shoots Quagmire in the arm. Fed up with Peter's stupidity, Quagmire severs ties and forces Joe to choose sides in their friendship. Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! I'm over here! Joe, Joe, come sit with me! Come on, you guys! Joe, I got a box of saltwater taffies and you can have two. Joe, I got a deck of cards you can put in your wheels to look cool. Eventually, Peter decides that the only way for them to mend their relationship is for Quagmire to shoot him in the arm. 
which Quagmire is all too eager to do. I need you to shoot me in the arm so we can be friends again. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I was supposed to offer, and then you were supposed to say, no, Peter, I'm not going to shoot you, although I do appreciate the gesture. Hand me the gun, Peter. When Peter balks, Joe does it instead. And while Peter argues he should shoot Joe now, Quagmire shoots Peter in the head. Just shooting Peter would be bad enough, but it also drops his cognitive abilities far below where they were. Peter, I'm so glad you patched things up with your friends. Have I told you that we're all friends again? Yes, Peter. We were just talking about it. You're going to take me to the zoo and roll me around. Number 6. Neglecting his children Given his promiscuity, Quagmire has dozens, if not hundreds, of illegitimate children throughout the world. ¿Dónde demonios estabas? Es más de la una y media de la mañana. Eso no significa que no Giggity puede vivir. Maldita sea, Giggity. A veces me pones furiosa. No puedo hablar contigo, Giggity, cuando te pones así. Me voy a ver los toros, Giggity, Giggity, Giggity. He's occasionally gotten involved in a few of their lives, briefly caring for a baby named Anna Lee, and even taking in his daughter Courtney after meeting her through a typically quagmire way. But these are brief one-episode relationships. What the heck was the theme of that dance? What do you mean? I mean, like, there was palm trees like it was Hawaii, but then there was a suit of armor in the corner, there was a big banner with fish on it. Can we get back to the fact that you're my dad? Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The rest of his kids he refuses to acknowledge or spend any time with, despite the obvious evidence. In one specific case, we admittedly can kind of understand it. Who wants to admit to creating a human-giraffe hybrid? Giraffity! Yeah, see, that's not mine. Number 5. All the I Nevers. Boy, I really appreciate you guys helping me out on this. Peter, we're your friends. We're always there for you in your time of need. Especially when you provide the free beer. When Peter's friends all agree to help him out on his fishing boat, their usual pastime of drinking beers is spiced up when they decide to play I Never. For those unfamiliar, you have to drink if you've done the thing the other person says they've never done. However, Quagmire has done quite a lot. I never slept with a woman with the lights on. I'll go next. Uh, I never had sex with Cleveland's wife. Although we don't see the full extent of his bizarre and disgusting behaviors, just the fact that he's done outlandish things with a spider monkey and a Home Depot employee makes the skin crawl. I never did the same thing, but with someone from Joanne Fabrics. Oh, God, this is ridiculous. We're not sure which implication is worse. That Quagmire bragged about these things to his friends, or that they may have witnessed some of them. The scene's still hilarious, though. Number 4. Arson and Insurance Fraud After Quagmire and Peter decide to help Mort drum up business for his pharmacy, things quickly go wrong. Hey, check it out. We got a giggity over there on the 32nd floor. I'm gonna go in for a closer look. Quagmire's horniness distracts him, losing the pharmacy's banner, which causes a bus accident, killing everyone on board. As if mass manslaughter weren't enough, the duo decides to help Mort recoup his losses by burning the pharmacy down so he can collect on the insurance. Peter, we're talking about a major crime here. This is not smuggling Oriental women into the country in steel cans. This is a serious felony. If not for Joe's intervention, all three of them likely would have gone down for the arson and fraud charges. Still not sure how they got away with the bus, though. Where were you the night of the fire? I was at the movies. What did you see? No strings attached. How was it? Sucked. Okay, that checks out. Boy, that Ashton Kutcher sure was a cat in that movie, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, totally. Wrong! He had a heart of gold. You're going down. Unfortunately, this isn't the first or last time Quagmire's libido leads to many deaths. Number 3. Killing His Sister's Boyfriend After recovering from an asphyxiation injury, it's exactly what you think. Quagmire gets closer with his sister Brenda and her boyfriend Jeff. Where am I? What happened? Oh, Glenn! Oh, thank God you're all right! Hey, you touching my girl? Hey, relax, Jeff. That's her brother. Yeah, that's how it starts. Come on, Brenda. We gotta get out of here. I need cigarettes and jeans. It quickly becomes clear that Jeff is abusive. To that end, Quagmire and the guys invite Jeff on a nighttime hunting trip and plan to kill him. All right, look. When he comes back, I'm just gonna do it, okay? I'm just gonna point my gun straight at his head before he even knows what's going on. Kinda like this? Although Jeff manages to briefly outmaneuver them and attempts to choke Quagmire to death, Quagmire's tolerance for choking allows him to slip away and run Jeff down with a car. 
Later, Brenda is distraught when told that Jeff left her. Dear Brenda, I have decided to leave you. I realize that you are too good for me, and you and our unborn child would be better off without me in the picture. Love, Jeff. P.S. If the cops ask, tell them that Joe, Peter, and Quagmire were with you last night. Now, we're not saying that Jeff wasn't a garbage excuse of a human being, but Quagmire still commits murder. Number 2. Beating up Brian Get out of there, you dirty little bastard! You're dead! Quagmire and Brian's feud has occasionally turned physical, and arguably the worst of these occurs shortly after Ida's transitioning. After coming back into town, Brian unknowingly sleeps with Ida. Although Brian's own reaction to finding out who he was with is pretty bad, Quagmire's is worse. When he finds out, Quagmire barges into the Griffin home and ruthlessly beats Brian throughout the house. If I ever see you anywhere near my house, I'll blow your head off! It's easily assault and animal abuse. And while Quagmire may not face any justice for his actions, at least Brian's parting words seem to cut deep. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Murdering the Simpsons Quagmire has done some terrible things, but killing off the Simpsons? That's real low. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Oh, I gotta say, that was fantastic. What do you say we go back to your place for round two? Sounds good to me. In a gag promo for the fellow Fox show, Quagmire assaults and then enters into an affair with Marge Simpson. Back at the Simpson residence, we watch an exterior shot of the house as Homer catches the two in bed together. Hey, what's going on here? Ah, get off my wife! Oh my god, oh my god! This prompts Quagmire to shoot him, and then Marge when she threatens to call the police. And then, all the kids. I can remember, Mom and Dad are dead. It's one of the darker Family Guy jokes, and arguably the worst thing Quagmire has ever done. We can see why this bit has only made it into the uncensored versions. 